This is Official Nerd Business. Hello nerd boys and girls, let's do some programming. On the screen you can see the problem statement for Project Euler's problem 31, coin sums. There's a bit about English currency and how it comes in 1 pence, 2 pence, 5 pence, etc. up to 2 pounds. And when we take a look at the value of 2 pounds there are several ways in which we can put that together given the coins that are specified here. One instance is when we take a coin of 1 pound, 50p, 220p, 15p, etc. etc. until we reach 200 pence in value. How many different ways can we make two pounds? At first, the number of combinations might seem startling. You might think about a factorial, but then you'd have the same uh, combinations along the way. So if if I um, if I make two pounds by putting together uh, 50p, 50p, and and one pound or one pound and twice 50p, are those the same or not? Um, so there's a slightly different way in which we're going to look at this problem and for that it helps to break down this problem in smaller steps so let's get to it here I've made a, a little bit of a table uh, where we are going to look at how many ways we can make 1p in how many ways we can make 2 pence in how many ways we could make the target value of 3 pence in how many ways we could make 4 pence etc and so that breaks down the complexity of the problem uh, at each stage so eventually we are going to reach 200 pence with this approach or uh, um, 2 pounds and to even uh, break down the complexity even further we are not going to look at all possible combinations of the seven coins listed but we will start filling this out with only the one pence coin so there is exactly one way in which we can make one p there is also exactly one way in which we can make two pence namely putting down two coins of value one and as you might have seen already, this goes on. There's one way to make every possible value out of one value coins. How would this table look if we were to take together the one and two pence coins? Then there's still only one way to make one P. There's now two ways to make two pence. I can put down a coin of value two, or I can put down two coins of value one. Same goes for 3 pence, and there's 3 ways to make 4p, also 3 for 5 pence, and at 6 pence it goes up again. This pattern continues. What happens if we throw a fiver into the mix? There's still only one way, still only two ways, and two ways, there's still only three ways, but now it gets interesting, now there's four ways to make 5 pence if we are allowed to use 5p coins, 2p coins and 1p coins. And again, this is an interesting pattern. So let's take a look at the pattern. If we take a look at this particular four ways of making 6p. We could write it out, we could count it out, but that's not a very structural way of looking at it. So how is this number constructed? It transfers the value of how many ways there were to make this one pence value and it adds to that basically a lookup to uh, the 6p minus the value of the, the highest current coin we are looking at which was uh, the two pence piece so we take 6p minus the 2p and we get a four pence um, target value and we copy in that three that we had there already now we need to make one note about that uh, particular method. If we take the 2 pence value and we subtract the highest possible coin that we have, we get a 0. So it's, it's basically each target value modulo. The highest coin is 0. 
and that would land us outside of the table so we are going to assume that when that happens when we have a um, a uh, modulo of zero then we are going to add one and we are going to compensate in our code slightly differently for this particular case but that's basically it that's how this table is going to work so you can see how this um, adds up when we uh, go to higher target values and you can see how this adds up when we add new coins, higher coin values so your 10 pence coin, your 20 pence coin etc so this should give us enough of a uh, groundwork to start building our solution up so let's head over into PyCharm alright here's PyCharm I've already set up the uh, template file as I usually do so here is the uh, Euler description of the website the one variable that we want to enter as we run this is the target amount uh, which defaults to the 200 2 pounds and here's the description etc etc so let's get cracking uh, we will get in a target value let's call it target for clarity's sake and let's see what are we going to do first I want to define all the coins we are using so let's say uh, list with the 1p coin 2, 5, 10, 20, 50, 100 for the 1 pound piece and 200 for 2 pound and then uh, we want to keep track of how many ways there are to make each possible target value ways to make and this is uh, we are going to do uh, some looking up so we are going to look at what it we already have defined for this um, uh, if, you, if you can recall the, um, the table we had and then there's a column for coin A which has excuse me, which has a certain value and then there's a column for uh, the for the coins we are currently looking uh, working with uh, B uh, but basically we could just loop over the same uh, list of A's every time because we are going to transfer the value of A into B for target value T in order to add that to the general confusion over here so we are trying to make target value one or two or three or four and we had something pre-calculated for the 20 pence let's let's take a look slightly further down the line then we know that for the value of 50 pence we are going to straight copy in whatever we had for this target value for 20 pence and then if this particular target value uh, is greater than 50 P, then we are going to subtract those 50 P's off of this target value and look up that target value. So basically we can do with one list and then loop over every coin incrementing this list and uh, keeping the value that we currently have in place for that um, but also make it possible to look it up. So I, all in all I'm thinking about using a dict structure here. So I could make a dict uh, with a slot for every target value that we are going to make and I am going to do that in one single statement so I'm not going to create a dict as such but I'm going to use a dict dictionary comprehension and a dict has a key value and a value value I'm going to initialize all the values to one so that's simulating that we have um, looked at all of the options for the one coin for the one P coin and those are always one as we just saw so for each and every of the 200 possible target values excuse me now this is range and range doesn't include itself in the upper bound so we're going to increment it by one for the call to our range function and uh, note that usually we, uh, if we were to specify 10 we would get all arguments or all uh, possible values from 0 to 9 
Um, but we are also interested in that zero. That's the way we are going to compensate for the um, for when the target value is exactly equal to the coin value. So we are going to create 201 different slots in our dictionary, ranging from zero up to 200, and initializing each and every one of these to one. Then we want to take every possible coin that we have. and start looking at every uh, target value in ways to make and do some math on them uh, but we should specify we already did all the possible actions for coin number one so let's exclude that uh, because those are initialized here already so coin one is already completely in the dictionary in our values and basically this is going to count up so the only thing we are eventually interested in let's also put that in right now all we want to know is how many ways we found to make this particular bad boy so all we want to know is what is in the last cell of this table note that we aren't creating a two-dimensional table as such um, so we don't have a uh, separate column for each and every set of coins we're using or highest coin we're using we are overriding by continuously adding a higher coin to the stack we were previously working with that's what this does uh, this is a uh, list slice which indicates that we start at index 1 instead of index 0 which would have uh, this would indicate we started in element 0 but we want to skip element 0 as that is this one useless 1 cent coin we want to dive in at number 2 and then we want to run all the way up to the list and we could specify a stepping parameter here as well um, but that's also default just step by one through this list of coins so this will start at 2 run all the way up to the end which is default obviously and take every next coin without skipping anything which is default and then we want to run through every um, this isn't correct we don't want to evaluate anything for coin number zero so I'm going to step off of this and make it loop through the range one up to target plus one so this is going to skip every possible coin zero which is in fact I could set this to two but whatever and uh, let's see now we want to make uh, ways to make of the slot we are currently looking at is equal to whatever was already in here so we could simply add to this um, and now we need to look out if we simply make this if we do this uh, so we have the value of every coin we are looking at so if we take a look at the 5p coin so this is the second iteration is looked then this variable here is equal to this item now we said that the uh, ways to makes a target amount which is this target amount is equal to whatever we already had or whatever was calculated on the run for the previous coin which is in this case basically the same um, and we add to that whatever is in this slot n places lower on the list where n is the value of the coin we are currently evaluating so that's what's happening here however if we, again we take a look at 5p coin and we have the uh, 4p target amount which is very well possible then this would create an out of bounds error because we are looking at element negative one which we don't have in this list so we could make this range starting at point value and that would eliminate a couple of calculations and would eliminate lookup errors so that should really be it um, let's run it on its own to see how it 
does if we get an answer that we are happy with. It seems to run and compile without any errors, so let's run through MainPy to get our timing information. I want to run problem number 31. And I want to work with the default amount. And there it is. It took us almost no time whatsoever. And we get an answer of 73. 1682 possible ways to make two pence or two pounds out of seven different coins. I can tell you if you enter this number over at Project Euler, you will get the green check mark. And I can also tell you that I was quite amazed at finding this number. Uh, it's it's pretty high number for such a simple amount as two pounds. The number of combinations that are um, possible to use. Um, when using all of these coins, it's uh, it's quite astounding to me. I hope you've um, learned something here today. Uh, uh, the big takeaway here is to always try and break down the problems that Project Euler gives you. There wasn't a particularly nice test case for this one, which they usually do specify in their problems. Um, but as you've seen, we can work that one out for ourselves. And I hope to see you again for problem number 32. Don't forget to check out my GitHub where you can find all of the sources to these solutions. Thanks for watching this video on official nerd business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in ONB? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.